Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. Unreal concepts, a reusable trigger. Let me run through a quick little example here. I have a button. When I touch it, it opens up a door. And then over here, I have another button. When I touch it, it opens up a door over here. Now these are designed in a reusable fashion where the trigger is separate from the door and the trigger references an actor to do something with. In this case, this one is connected to this door. And I actually have a line set up so you can actually see what it's connected to here. On here, you can actually see it's connected to this one. This is actually something that doesn't work properly. We're actually going to fix it during the video so I can show you the issues. But as you can see, we have a relationship here. And if I was to remove this door, well, we no longer have a relationship. And I could run this event. This does not trigger anymore, but this one will still trigger when I touch it. And of course, you can remap easily. You can go over here. We could choose the first door. And you'll see it's now connected. And when I touch it, we open up the first door. Now, this is meant to be modular. And this is an example of how to do things such as blueprint communication between different types and to allow reusability of actors. So let's get started and get right into it. Our main object is going to be our trigger. And our trigger is pretty simple. We have a root object. On top of that, I have a static mesh. And this is so I have something visible for my trigger. Now, you don't have to have one. I just have a little box with a texture on it. And on top of that, I have a trigger collision, which I have set up to be the entire volume. It's basically this box here that's encompassing the entire thing. So if you touch the box, you're going to go and trigger. If we pull up our event graph, this one's pretty simple. When we begin an overlap with our trigger collision box, I'm checking to see if the thing that overlapped is our player. I'm doing this through blueprint interfaces by checking to see if it implements a BPI player interface. And my player, if I was to go to it and look at my generic character, uh, generic there we go, my generic character, and look at his class settings, he implements BPI player. So we're making sure that only the player is going to trigger this trigger. And if that is true, all we're doing is talking to our actor to trigger, which is a public variable defined as an actor, so that way any actor can be assigned to it, and then calling the handle triggered event. The actor that I'm talking to in this case is going to be this one right here. It is using the BPI triggerable interface. And if we look at that, we're going to find it only has a simple event called handle triggered. It's just a way to pass information back and forth. And it it's called, it's going to go ahead and just do something. And in this case, I'm telling it because it is consisting of three different parts here, a wall, a wall, and a door. I'm telling it to move the door down over time. Now the reusable part about this is this event here is specific to this blueprint, my triggerable door. This right here, the handle trigger and colliding is specific to my trigger. The trigger doesn't know what is going to happen once it's triggered and it doesn't care. The point is for it to simply pass along the trigger event to something else and to have the something else handle it. So that way it's completely reasonable. What do I mean by this? Well, let's say for example, we create, we go back into our reusable trigger and we'll create a new actor. I'll call this one a BP explodey thing because why not? We'll go ahead and go into our blueprint. Let's go ahead and add a static mesh so we can see this. And we'll make our static mesh uh, our happy tree friend. So we have a little tree here with a lot of funky colors, and he's going to be our static mesh that we're going to do something with. Now, if we go into our class settings, actually, let's not. Let's not do anything in there. Let's go back to our reusable trigger, which we're not going to have to adjust at all. We'll go into here. We'll pull out our explodey thing, which is going to be our tree. And let's move. Let's get rid of this wall. We don't need it anymore. We'll go ahead and move our tree over here. Now, let's take our trigger. Tell it to talk to our explodey thing, which is our tree. And as you can see, it's connected and hit play. And we'll go ahead and walk on our trigger. 
and you'll notice nothing happens, which is good. When we quit, you'll notice we have no errors. So that's one of the keys. With Blueprint Interfaces, if the item you're sending the request to, in our case, we're telling that explodey thing item, which is set up right here in our trigger, we're telling it to handle trigger. If we go into our explodey thing and we look at our graph, let me delete these, you'll notice we have no handle trigger. And that's fine. It's simply going to say, I have no idea what that is, and it's going to do nothing, and it's not going to error out. So that's the great part about this. Now, if this thing wants to, we now we can type in handle triggered, and you'll notice, well, it's going to have an issue. It's not going to work. We have not set up our interface. We'll add in our interface for triggerable and compile. Now we'll do handle trigger, and we can add the event. Now this is going to get triggered, and of course, it's easy enough to test. Print string hello. We'll play, we'll walk, and it'll say hello every time we trigger. That's simple enough. Okay, so what's the next thing we want to do? Well, all I intended to do was to take this, and we're going to go ahead and destroy it. We'll destroy our static mesh component. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's just destroy self. There we go. Destroy actor, and we'll destroy ourself. We'll make it simple. We'll go into here and hit play. We'll walk on the switch, and it's destroyed. Of course, nothing's going to happen at this point in time. We might have a small error here, and this error is going to be we're attempting to access it, but it's pending a kill. And this is one of those things where you have to design your code around what you're going to do. It's pretty simple. We could, for example, go into our trigger here, and we're telling our trigger to handle trigger. But that's because our trigger exists. We'd have to do something like valid. Oops. Let's try this again. We want the other valid, because the other valid's better. We'll do is valid, and we'll execute this. Is valid. And what this does is, if you read it, it determines if an object is valid. If we were to go to the other one and go to the is valid and read it itself, you'll see it says non null and not pending kill. That's the important part there. We'll do that. We'll do that. We'll hit play. We'll try it again. We'll walk it over a couple times. And now we get no error. So we've cleaned up our code a little bit. We put in a little sanity check. And we made sure that whenever we pass it along, it's going to be the player triggering it. It's going to be a valid object. And we're going to tell it to handle trigger. And in our case, we're going to explode. You could have it do anything you want. And since these are reusable, we can take this trigger. And we can say, okay, well, why don't you explode the thingy as well. We'll go ahead and walk over it, and it explodes the thingy. And if we walk over here, well, nothing's going to happen. It's got nothing to work on. And we close it out, and you can see it's working fine. So that's the point of this. That was the point of the reusable trigger. An easy way of creating an item, and this, again, can be anywhere. We could move this up. We could move this so it looks like it's kind of sticking out of here, which didn't work out real well. Because these are blueprint instances, we've created two different triggers. We could always go into our mesh, for example, and we can change the color to something like a purple. We can change the size. We could go to 0 0.3 and 0 0.3. Oops, let's try 0.3 on the Y and 0.3 on the Z. Pull this back through a little bit like that. There we go. Now we have what looks like a little button on the wall. We touch it and our tree disappears. It's all completely configurable because these are instances of a generic trigger. Now, one issue I said we were going to have is due to me using these lines. These are debug lines. I'm creating them in the construction script. The construction script is a script run on any actor blueprint. Right here, you can see it. Under next to your event graph, you'll find a construction script. You can also find it over here under a function. And you'll find it on all of your actor blueprints. This is ran anytime the item's created, also anytime it's moved inside of your scene. So as you notice here, every time I move it, it's moved the line. Now the problem with this is our line is a debug line. And debug lines are intended to be temporary. And they don't have any way of referencing themselves inside of Blueprints. So when I draw my line, that's it, my line is drawn. 
My duration is set to basically indefinite, a bunch of nines, and I have a thickness of two. So that means it's going to stay forever. Now to get around that, what I'm doing is clearing all of the debug lines before I draw the line. So that's why it looks like there's only one line as I move it. The problem with this is it's clearing all of the lines, so only the current one is keeping track, as you can see here. So it's a small issue. You could easily, you know, just change this to a duration of two, and then it's only going to show up for two seconds. And that way, if you need to see where something is, you can move it. Or a, it's a construction script. You can always get playful with it. We'll add an arrow to our trigger. And I made a separate part down here where we're basically taking our arrow. And we are rotating our arrow to face our target. So if we look here, we now have an arrow on each of these. We have an arrow here facing our target. And as you can see, depending on when I move it, it'll point to it. And if I change my trigger item from my explodey thing to my door, my arrow moves to point to it. And you'll notice the arrow here points as well. Because these arrows are unique, I can change their rotation and location without them affecting the other ones. This is just a way to give a little bit of a information and all I'm doing here is really simple. I'm checking to see if we have an actor. If we have if actor to trigger is not equal to nothing. If you don't have an asset selected, it's equal to basically null. So if we have an actor, then we're just going to set the world rotation of the arrow. And that's all we're doing there and we're doing that in the construction script. Keep in mind the nice thing, arrows are only during debug so you're never going to see it in actual gameplay. That's pretty much going to wrap up this video. It's intended to show a concept of reusable blueprint, reusable blueprints, reusable blueprintable components, reusable actors, by just simply creating a trigger that we can use and reuse and is completely independent and is easily reusable. That is the point of this. So you could have one trigger, one trigger blueprint for your entire game and all it does is simply talk to something else and that other thing is going to work. 